Hi everybody! Para dito sa video ko na to, magpapakilala muna ako. I'm Dr. Maureen P. Almario. Uh, just call me Doc Mengay. I finished my pre-med in UP Diliman, Quezon City. And I got my medical degree in UST Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. I'm a licensed doctor. And I've been practicing as a primary care physician for almost 14 years. So, kaya ako nagpakilala kasi I think kailangan may establish din kahit pa paano yung credibility ko as an, as an informant. And for me, itong content ng blog na to, ang um, pinaka, ano, importanteng masyashare ko sa inyo. Okay, so let's start. A few months back, I read a book entitled The China Study. It's, it is written by uh, Dr. Colin Capbell. He is a biochemist who specializes on the effect of the of nutrition on long-term health. And the co-author of book is anak niya, yung son niya, si Dr. Thomas Campbell. He is a board-certified family medicine in U.S. Si Dr. Colin T. Campbell, ito try ko yung best ko na bigay kahit pa paano yung pinaka-importante na laman ng book. Try ko in detail. Okay? Um, Si Dr. Colin Campbell nagtrabaho dito sa Philippines no 1970s no ang aim nila is to aid uh, children malnutrition here in our country and um, for them yung children malnutrition dito sa atin is due to lack of animal protein intake tapos during his stay here na kilala niya si Dr. Jose Kaedo during that time, Dr. Jose Caedo is one of the advisor of the president at that time, si President Ferdinand Marcos. Tapos nalaman niya dun sa doctor that yung mga children na nagkakaroon ng liver cancer ay eh, galing sa mga best fed families. Sila yung mga napapakain at ano, gusto sa animal protein. Tapos, during the time of this study na nilabas yung ano, researchers from India, um, may laboratory rats silang pinag-aralan. So, hinati yun sa group A and group B. Yung group A rats and group B rats, binigyan sila na aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a potent carcinogen. No? It could cause cancer. Tapos, yung group A rats, binigyan nila na 5% protein. And then, yung group B rats naman, binigyan nila na 20% protein. Yung nasa group A, na binigyan na 5% protein, hindi naka-develop ng liver cancer. And yung namang nasa group B, um, sila yung na binigyan na 20% protein, sila yung naka-develop ng liver cancer. Medyo nakaka- gulat kasi protein kailangan yun kasi ng organism no para mabuhay and yet kapag nasa mataas na amount binigay siya sa mataas na amount na amount nagko-cause ng cancer tapos para ni-replicate nila yung study and then they so nga ano kapag mataas yung intake ng rats ng protein nagkakaroon nga ng cancer tapos inalam din nila up to what extent o oh, hanggang gaano kataas yung protein yung pwede ibigay sa rats hanggang magmamanifest siya ng uh, liver cancer. So, nakita nila 5% protein hindi pa nagkakos ng o oh, hindi pa nakakasanhi ng liver cancer. Kapag hanggang 10%, hindi daw nagmamanifest o oh, nakaka, nakikitaan ng liver cancer yung rats. Pero kapag tumaas na siya above, above 10% protein na yung binigay, ayun, po pwede na makitaan ng liver cancer yung yung rats. Tapos, pinalitan din nila, hindi na aflatoxin, gumamit din sila ng, ano, pinalitan din nila, nagtry din sila kung hepatitis B virus naman yung ibibigay nila. Hepatitis B virus is one of the risk factors of developing liver cancer. Those uh, organisms who have hepatitis B virus as a 20 times to 40 times risk of developing liver cancer. So, in-injection na nila yung rats ng hepatitis B virus. Tapos, ganun din yung nakita nila. Pag binigyan ng low protein, hindi nakaka-develop ng liver cancer. Yung binigyan ng mataas na protein, 
yun yung nakaka-develop ng liver cancer. Pinag-aralan din nila dun sa ibang klaseng cancer in the University of Illinois Medical Center. Pinag-aralan naman nila breast cancer sa rats. Ganun din. Pag binigyan din ng mataas na protein, nakaka-develop ng uh, breast cancer yung rats. So, ano ba yung protein na ginagamit nila? Ang ginamit nila is casein. Casein is a protein found in cow's milk. Cow's milk is consists of 80 to 87 percent casein. So therefore, cow's milk, which is an animal protein, could cause cancer. Pero nakita din nila that not all protein are created equal. Gumamit din sila ng plant protein, no? Yung protein na nakikita sa plants. So gumamit sila ng soy at saka gluten which is found in wheat. And ang nakita nila, hindi nagkakos ng cancer pag ang protein galing sa plants. So kahit taasan nila yung aflatoxin dun sa rats, taasan nila yung bigay ng protein dun sa rats, hindi nagkakos ng cancer. Tapos balik tayo dun sa uh, ano, rats na may uh, liver cancer. Those rats who have full blown tumors, ang ginawa nila, in-switch nila yung high protein intake to a low protein intake. And ang nakita nila, lumiit yung tumor by 35 to 40%. So, nung binawasan yung protein intake ng rats, lumiit yung tumor ng 35 to 40%. It only means that casein and most likely all animal protein could cause cancer. Ngayon ko sasabihin ninyo, ay hindi naman ako kailangan mag-alala dyan dahil wala naman sa lahi ko ang cancer. Cancer is only uh, 2% to 3% genetics. Cancer is largely due to environmental and lifestyle factors. Based on studies, those people who consume animal based food have uh, chronic illnesses like um, heart disease, diabetes, and weight problem. Most of them are overweight or obese. They have autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, osteoporosis, uh, kidney diseases like urolithiasis. Nabubulag din sila, nagkakaroon ng blindness and cognitive decline nakaka-experience yung iba at old age na Alzheimer's. Um, pero yung mga kumakain daw ng mga plant-based food, they are the healthiest. So, therefore, eating the right food can save our lives. Ano ba yung right food na sinasabi dun sa book ni Dr. Colin Campbell? is the whole food plant-based diet. Noong 1980, nakilala ni Dr. Colin Campbell si Dr. Jun Shi Chen. He is a Chinese scientist na nagbigay ng opportunity kay Dr. Colin Campbell na mag-conduct ng human study. Kaya ganun yung title ng book, The Chinese Study. Okay, kasi dito sa China sila nag-conduct din ng study about nutrition. Okay, so share ko sa inyo yung findings nila sa China Study. Okay, first, increased animal-based food intake increases one's cholesterol. Then second, animal-based food is linked with increased risk of cancer, particularly breast cancer. And then third, higher fiber consumption means higher consumption of iron as well. Yung fiber, yun yung exclusively nakikita sa plant food. No, animal-based food, wala silang fiber. Tapos, masingit ko lang si Dr. Dennis Porkit. Um, he is a professor in Trinity College in Dublin. No, sinasabi niya, fiber is very important in our body kasi, ano, yun yung uh, nagre-regulate na um, regular bowel movement ng isang tao. Tapos, importante yung fiber doon sa pitukan ng tao kasi yun yung maglilinis ng mga possible carcinogenic chemicals na nandun sa pituka. And then, he proposed that colo colorectal cancer is due to low fiber intake ng tao. Okay? Tapos, 
Um, yan, part higher fiber intake is associated with lower levels of blood cholesterol. And then fifth, plants are the source of antioxidants. So low levels of antioxidants like vitamin C is associated with development of cancer, heart diseases, hypertension, and stroke. And then sixth, yung Chinese people na nagkakonsume ng whole food plant-based diet, Kung i-compare dun sa mga Amerikas na nagkukonsume ng animal-based food, nakita nila mas mababa yung timbang ng mga Chinese people. Though, they consume more calories compared to the Americans who consume animal-based food. No, mas mababa nga yung timbang, nila, yung timbang nila. Kasi yung excess calories na nakukonsume ng plant-based eater, nakukonvert into body heat. No? Unlike yung kapag animal-based food, yung excess calories na store sa, ka sa katawan as body fat. So, nakikita ninyo na mas uh, may advantage talaga yung pagkain ng plant-based food. Okay, i-share ko naman sa inyo about the benefits of whole food plant-based diet. Whole food plant-based diet. Okay, first benefit, reverse heart disease. Dr. Caldwell Esselstein Jr., he is a reputable cardiac surgeon in Cleveland, Ohio. He uses whole food plant-based diet to treat his patients. So, 70% of his patients nagkaroon na unplugged arteries just by adopting whole food plant-based diet. If we're going to look at the picture, yung nasa right, yan yung picture ng blood vessel dun sa heart ng patient. No, hindi maganda yung blood flow. Uh, pero after adopting the whole food plant-based diet, kung titignan yung picture doon sa may left side, nakita nyo, naging maganda na yung blood flow. So, hindi na kailangan operahan yung pasyente. Okay, second benefit of whole food, whole food plant-based diet is weight loss. Meron isang study na binigyan ng instruction yung mga overweight na kumain sila ng plant-based food, unlimited but still, nagkaroon sila na 17 pounds, average weight loss sa 17 pounds in just 3 weeks. But then, there are cases na pwede pa rin hindi mag-lose ng weight yung patient. Siyempre, kapag puro refined carbohydrates niya na yung, na yung mga tinitake niya, like yung sweets, pasta, cake, yun, po pwede hindi siya mag-lose ng weight or mag-gain pa nga siya ng weight. And then, second, kapag wala physical activity yung patient. And third, kapag may genetic predisposition yung patient na magkaroon talaga ng overweight body, it doesn't take so much na ano, refined carbohydrates para sila maging weight. And then, um, third, uh, Dr. Arnish, no, sa study niya, yung whole food plant-based study can stop and even reverse early stage of prostate cancer. And then fourth, whole food plant-based diet can treat diabetes. There's a study na pinag in 25 patients with type 1 diabetes and 25 patients na may type 2 diabetes. Uh, 25 out of 25 patients with type 1 diabetes were able to decrease their insulin dosage by 40% and decrease their blood sugar, and cholesterol by 30% in just 3 weeks. Siyempre talaga hindi sila pwede kasi tanggalin ng insulin kasi yung beta cells na, sa, na nasa pancreas na naglalabas ng insulin, sira na. So, kailangan talaga nila mag-inject ng insulin. Pero napakalaking bagay para sa pasyente yung mag-decrease sila ng uh, insulin dose sila ng 40%. And then, yun naman, 24 out of 25 patients with type 2 diabetes were able to discontinue their medication. Hindi na nila kailangan ng gamot kasi magaling na yung diabetes nila. Wala na silang diabetes. Tapos, marami pang ibang benefits yung whole food plant-based diet. I'm going to show you the, ano, the benefits. Ito sa left side ko, makita nyo pa yung iba pang benefits ng whole food plant-based diet. Ito yung nasa book. I-run through lang natin. No? Para mas gusto ko kasi sana sa inyo share First, you could live longer. You could look and feel younger. Have more energy. Lose weight. 
Lower your blood cholesterol. Prevent and even reverse heart disease. Then lower your risk of prostate, breast, and other cancer. Preserve your eyesight in your later years. Prevent and treat diabetes. Katulad na na-mention ko kanina. No? Avoid surgery in many instances. Fastly decrease the need for pharmaceutical drugs. Keep your bones strong. Avoid impotence. Avoid stroke. Prevent kidney stones. Keep your baby from getting type 1 diabetes. Um, elevate constipation. Lower your blood pressure. Avoid Alzheimer's later on in life. And then beat arthritis. Okay, ngayon, i-share ko naman sa inyo about some of the disadvantages of animal-based diet. So first, animal-based diet increases the risk of various cancer. Even pala yung ano, prostate cancer in men is linked with consumption of dairy milk. No? Then second, animal protein suppresses production of vitamin D. And low vitamin D creates an inviting environment for different cancers, autoimmune diseases, osteoporosis, and other uh, diseases to appear. And then third, development of autoimmune disease like type 1 diabetes. So type 1 diabetes is linked with cow's milk uh, consumption, usually infant formula. And then fourth, uh, animal-based protein is, uh, could increase the risk for fracture in osteoporosis. So diba misan makikita ninyo, uh, nakalakihan natin, in order to avoid osteoporosis and to have healthy bones, you have to drink milk. Diba, established na na yung milk is an animal protein. So, kasi ganito yung nangyayari, kapag yung tao nag-consume ng milk, nagkakaroon ng acidic environment sa loob ng katawan ng tao. Now, to balance that acidity, kailangan maglabas yung bones natin ng calcium. So, actually, consuming milk could uh, pull away the calcium in our bones. Tapos, later on, makakaroon tayo ng brittle bones nung hihina yung buto natin. Pero makikita ninyo sa mga commercial for better, for better uh, bone health, consume milk. So, hindi pala ganun talaga yung nangyayari. The more you consume milk, the more na magkakaroon ka ng ano, unhealthy bones. Um, tapos, may mga recommendations on how to minimize the risk of osteoporosis. Uh, there's a book uh, na mention that we have to stay physically active. We have to eat a variety of full food, plant-based uh, food. Tapos, we should avoid animal food like uh, dairy. And then, keep salt intake to a minimum. Tapos, isa pang disadvantage of animal-based diet is kidney stone due to dairy intake. Kasi nga, katulad yung sinabi ko, once you drink milk, no, nagkakaroon ng acidity, acidic environment yung katawan ng tao. And then, para nga ma-neutralize yung acidity na yun, mag uh, pupull out ng calcium dun sa bones natin. Tapos, i-secret nyo yun sa urine. Tapos, yung calcium oxalate, yung stone na na-form, dahil dun sa calcium na lumabas galing sa buto, yun yung usually nagiging ano, um, ano ba ito? Kidney stone. Okay, and then, isa pa, uh, sixth, a disadvantage of animal-based diet, cognitive decline. It is due to lack of uh, antioxidants dun sa animal-based food, at saka due to poor vascular health, no, dahil dun sa animal-based food. Okay, ano ba tong full food plant-based diet na sinasabi ko? So, yung whole food plant-based diet is consist of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts. Basically, dun, yun lang yung kakainin mo. Ngayon ako personally, nag-decide ako mag-shift into a whole food plant-based diet. Kasi marami na kasing nagiging problems yung katawan ko, yung health ko, parang nagkakaroon na talaga ako ng mga problems sa health. First, few months back, makita nyo dun sa, sa isang vlog ko, 
nagkaroon ako ng orticarrier tagulabay na hindi ko na alam paano ko i-control. Tapos, I have elevated blood pressure. And then, I'm overweight. So, personally, ayun, nag-decide na talaga ako mag-shift sa whole food plant-based diet. Tapos, isa pa, na isi-share ko sa inyo, kaya ako nag-decide mag whole food plant-based diet. Yung mother ko, 2 years ago, died of cancer. Tapos, yung lola ko, which is mother ng mother ko, sinasabi, died of liver cancer. And then, yung tiyahe ng mother ko, Di, uh, had colon cancer and then yung tuhin ng mother ko died of pancreatic cancer currently my uncle kapatid ng tatay ko is battling colon cancer so nasa family history ko talaga yung cancer but then knowing that only 2% to 3% of cancer is genetics ibig sabihin po pwede ko siya maiwasan. So, nung nabasa ko yung libro, nagkaroon ako ng hope na meron akong magiging control dun sa health ko. So, nag-decide ako na mag-ship sa whole food plant-based diet. So, paano ko to sisimulan? So, ang ginawa ko, kinuha lang ko yung back nung June Kinuhanan ko yung sarili ko ng blood sample. So, ako kumuha ng dugo sa sarili ko. And then, sinend out ko sa laboratory. So, papakita ko sa inyo yung result nung June. Okay, so makikita nyo dito sa my left side yung blood result ko. So, yung fasting blood sugar ko, okay naman, mababa pa nga. So, ang elevated dun sa blood test result ko is my blood uh, blood uric acid elevated, yung triglycerides, and yung SGPT. So, wala akong tinik na gamot. Inadapt ko na yung whole food plant-based diet. Tapos, eto na yung result ko. Uh, after 96 days, kinuha lang ko ulit yung sarili ko ng blood sugar. Sugar. Eh, pero kailangan eh. Uh, so, nakita nyo yung blood uric acid ko, normal na siya. Tapos yung triglycerides ko normal na, even may SGPT normal na. Pero wala naman akong ininom na gamot. So, nag-shift ako sa whole food plant-based diet para ayusin yung health ko. Kasi as a doctor, ang hirap naman mag-advise sa patient, eto po kainin nyo, gaito po yung gawin ninyo, kung ako mismo hindi healthy. So, sinimulan ko sa sarili ko. Tapos, sa ngayon, yun na nga, normal na yung laboratory results ko. Tapos, um, yung blood pressure ko, nag-normalize na din without taking any medication. Tapos, yung tagulabay ko, yung urticaria ko, controlled na siya by 85 to 90% na napakalaking bagay. And, I lost weight. Currently, uh, malapit na ako dun sa BMI uh, ideal BMI ng Asians, which is 23. So, malapit na manapit na ako. So, nakita ko talaga yung advantage ng whole food plant-based diet. Kaya, gusto ko sana i-advise dito sa mga patients ko. Ngayon, um, kung hindi nakakain ng karni lahat ng tao, syempre yun ang dream ko. Pwede naman kasi ang hirap, no? lalo na sa uh, ibang tao. Siguro, Ang goal ko na lang, ma-reduce yung meat intake nila by 90%. Okay na ako dun. No? So, sana din ma-realize yung mga patients pag na mahalaga ang health nila, mahalaga ang health natin, ang buhay natin heram lang. So, buhay natin heram lang. So, pangalagaan natin to. Tapos, sa akin na kaya gusto ko maging malusog ako kasi later on in life gusto ko marami pa akong magawa marami pa akong tao matulungan sa profession ko gusto ko pa mas marami akong pasyenteng magamot at saka later on ayoko nang magkar ayoko magkaroon ng 
uh, fatal illness na magiging pabigat ako sa pamilya ko. Yun nga lang cancer no sa mother ko. Nakita ko kung gaano siya ano, how emotionally stressful it is, how physically stressful it is, how financially stressful it is. Ayoko sana na magkaroon ako ng ganong sakit. Kaya, I've decided na mag-adapt ng whole food plant-based diet. Gusto ko may control ako kahit pa paano sa kakahinat na ng health ko. If ever naman in the future magkaroon pa rin ako ng cancer, at least masasabi ko sa sarili ko, ginawa ko na lahat ng pwede kong gawin. Ngayon, share ko sa inyo kung ano yung kinakain ko. So, dito sa left side, makikita nyo, yan, pansit. I still eat pansit. Puro lang siya vegetables, wala siyang meat. And then, taco fern salad. Ayan, sarap yan. Ano, ang maganda dito sa pag-adopt ng whole food plant-based diet, marami ako na-discover na bagong pagkain. Masarap kainin. And then, ayan, yung susunod, yung pesto pasta. Wala siyang meat, ah, meron na siya fresh broccoli, cucumber, and carrots. Ngayon, share ko din sa inyo yung supplementation. Sa The Chinese Study, the, yung book, ang nire-recommend lang naman ni Dr. Colin Campbell, dalawa lang, vitamin D, lalo na yung ano, nakatira sa malalamig na lugar yung may winter na wala ganun sila sa exposure. At saka yung vitamin D12. Okay, yung vitamin D, nagtitake ako nun. Ito yung vitamin D ko. Ayan, vitamin D. Uh, 1,000 IU. I take one capsule once a day. Kasi hindi ako naaarawan. So, kasi papasok ko na maaga, may service ako. So, uwi ako, may service ako. Hindi na talaga ako na-expose sa sun. Tapos, uh, second, yung vitamin B12. Yung vitamin B12 is made by an organism found in soil. Eh, lahat naman ng mga pagkain kasi natin nililinis natin. So, wala tayong exposure sa mga microorganism na gumagawa ng vitamin B12. Yung animals, however, kapag kumain sila ng, let's say, grass, dun sa soil, dun sa ground, nakoconsume nila yun. No? So, kailangan natin ng supplementation para maiwasan natin yung deficiency. Though, actually, meron ng mga food certified food with vitamin B12 like yung mga soy milk, yung vitamin B12 sila, at saka yung nutritional yeast. Yung nutritional yeast yun yung pinaka-cheese ng ano, plant-based eater. Ito yung nutritional yeast. No? Marami siyang vitamin B12. So, nilalagay ko ito dun sa pasta ko. O kaya minsan, ayun, bumibili din ako ng ano, na soy milk fortified with vitamin B12. Pero para sure na lang din na hindi ako magkakaroon ng deficiency, bumili na rin ako ng vitamin B12 su uh, supplement in the form of methyl cobalamin. Yan, para mas okay yung absorption. Kasi meron dalawa nito. We have cyanocobalamin and methyl cobalamin. So, methyl cobalamin form yung binili ko. Tapos, I also take um... DHA to 50 mg and 125 mg EPA supplement. Ayan, may omega supplement. Vegan omega. I bought this sa Nutrition Depot online. Actually, may store sila. SM North Edsa. May iba pa silang branch. Nakalimutan ko na. Pero, nag-order na lang ako sa kanila online. Okay, bakit kailangan ko nito? Kasi, yung isa pa, kasi I don't eat fish, no, pure plant-based, yung pinili kong route, no, kasi, ano yun, yung fish kasi na titrigger yung urticaria ko, so, hindi ako pwede mag-fish. Tapos, I tried eating na lang yung, ano, uh, seaweeds, like, yung lato, yung ganyan, kaso, natitrigger pa rin yung urticaria ko. So, nag-design nila ako mag-supplement. So, isa sa mga kailangan ng mga plant-based eater, yung omega-3 fatty acids. There are three omega-3 fatty acids. We have the ALA, DHA, and EPA. Yung ALA, nakukuha siya sa plants. No? Uh, like, uh, flaxseed, soybeans, 
at saka meron din siya sa canola oil. Yung ginagamit ko pa ng blue twist canola oil naman. At saka extra virgin olive oil. Tapos, ayan, bumili na rin ako ng flax seeds. No? Kasi kailangan natin yung omega-3 fatty acids. So, ito, may flax seeds ako. One tablespoon lang nga, di usually nilalagay ko siya sa, pwede siya sa quicker oats. No? Pwede din siya sa, nilalagay ko din siya sa pasta ko. So, ayan, marami naman siya pwedeng paglagyan. Pwede din siya sa smoothie. Ayan. Tapos, yung, ano, ALA, actually, if you have enough, it will be converted into the longer chain fatty acids, which is the EPA and the DHA. But then, minsan yung conversion ng katawan natin, hindi ganun ka sufficient. No? So, para, ano, uh, sure na meron akong DHA and EPA which is a longer chain uh, fatty acid bumili na lang ako ng supplement no? ito na lang yung ginagamit ko para hindi ko na lang siya iintindihin so basically tatlo yung supplements at yung take ko no? uh, actually parang 4 kasi I take ano yung vitamin D, vitamin B12 and then yung ano, DHA and EPA tapos, I see to eat it every day I eat at least 1 tablespoon of flax seeds yeah. okay, dun sa book, the China study parang meron ako dun nakita mga parang advice or yan, words of advice so, ano so, sana sa inyo i-share okay, so first um, in the first week you may experience some stomach upset as your digestive system adjusts so, totoo yun. Yung first few days, talagang parang, ano, kumukulo palagi yung chan ko. nag adjust yun nga yung chan ko. Pero nawala din naman agad. Tapos, second, you need to put time into this. You need to cook and learn new recipes. Tama yun. Kasi, wala naman ako gano'ng mabila na luto na, na ano, na plant-based food masyado sa labas. So, hindi ko rin alam kung ano matika yung ginamit. So, para sure na lang talaga na plant-based talaga. Ako na lang yung nagluluto ng food ko. And then, ayun, nagre-research din ako kung ano yung mga ano, plant-based food na pwede kong lutuin. Okay, third, you'll need to adjust psychologically. Meal can be complete and fulfilling even without the meat. Kasi yung iba talaga naghahanap ng karne. Pag wala karne, wala siyang ulam. So, dapat mag-adjust kayo ng i-adjust talaga natin yung mindset natin na pwede naman natin ma-enjoy yung pagkain even without the meat. Kapag talaga naghahanap kayo ng meat, ako, yung first few, ano ko, uh, days ko na nag-adjust, ay eat tofu, tokwa. Yun, pwede naman. Meron mga vegan meat, no? Kaya they're processed. Diba, may vegan burger, ganyan. Yung vegan kasi, tsaka whole food, plant-based diet, medyo magkaiba eh. Kasi kapag vegan, they have processed food na dahil sa process na sila, hindi na siya ganun ka-healthy. So, as much as possible, and I try to stay away from from those. Siguro, occasionally pwede, gusto yung tikman, pero uh, ano yung frequent talaga na ano, nakakainin mo kang hindi siya advisable. Then, for you may not be able to go to the same restaurants you used to. So, syempre, maghahanap na kayo ng, ano, uh, restaurant that would cater uh, yung pagkain na kinakain nyo, yung plant-based, which is medyo mahirap pa. Pero meron, meron. And then, fifth, your family, friends may not be supportive. Totoo yan. Deep down, they know that their diet isn't healthy. It's threatening to them that someone is able to give up unhealthy eating habits. So, oh, maraming mga magsasabi na ano na, pa pwedeng maging at risk yung health mo pag nag-plant-based ka rin, magkaroon ka ng deficiencies. Pero, actually, para sa akin, so far, okay ako, mas naging okay ako nung nag-plant-based diet ako. 
nakita ko talaga yung benefits. No? Kasi ang hirap isabihin na kailangan yung subukan para makita nyo sa sarili niyo yung benefits ng whole food plant-based diet. No? Oo, oh, maraming taong nakapaligid na hindi maging supportive. Ano, basta gawin nyo lang kung alam ninyo makakabuti sa inyo, which think ko talagang okay siya. No, pwede nyo naman subukan. Then six, you may spend a little extra money trying things. Do it, it's worth it. Yes, totoo yun. Kasi, bawa, nagtatry ako ng ibang, ano, recipe, merong mga ingredients na medyo may price talaga. Pero, tinat, ano, tinatry kong subukan. Kasi, baka, sayang, baka magustuhan ko. Ayan. No, talagang, nag-experiment ka sa pagkain. And then, you have to eat enough. Hindi ka naman din kasi magiging ng weight. As long as you're ano, eating whole food plant-based diet, tapos sabayan mo siya na exercise, hindi ka magiging ng weight. No? Actually, parang kahit kain ako ng kain, tuloy pa rin yung pag-lose ng weight ko. Tapos, eat a variety. So, dapat, ano, ah, uh, balance din. Dapat lahat makain mo whole, uh, do sa whole food plant-based diet. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts. Okay. So, siguro hanggang dito na lang muna itong ano, vlog ko on whole food plant-based diet. If ever uh, may tao na mag-try ng whole food plant-based diet and nag-benefit dito sa sa ano na to, sa diet na to or sa lifestyle na to no it's a lifestyle um, share naman kayo comment din kayo para mabasa din ng iba para mag serve as an inspiration para matry din ng iba yung whole food plant based diet okay if you like this video don't forget to like and to subscribe to my youtube channel and aantayin ko yung mga ano, comments ninyo share sa anak kayo okay, bye